Shalom. First and foremost, all praises, all glory, and all honor be unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Hakodash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of the great millstone who rule well. Salutations to the hopeful elect out there pushing this word in truth, sincerity, and indeed. It's your brother Chapataza from the Great Millstone Chicago branch coming to you with another one. And um, this is really a testimony uh, that uh, I was I told uh, the brothers out there, you know, some of the head brothers here in the Great Millstone Chicago. And they told me to put it on wax. All right. You know, the chief leader, Elder Malcolm, he told me to put it on wax. And uh, yeah, following order. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, basically, um, just get straight to it. My wife, she she has dreams every once in a while, and uh, this particular dream she had the other day, it was uh, it was raw, you know. And she said in the dream, the shit hit the fan, all hell had broken loose, civil unrest, anarchy, famine, you know, all the biblical things that are coming to pass but this was sometime in the future it had to be the, the the recent future um i got babies you know i got two small babies she said you know they were uh they were bigger and walking you know not really toddlers just small children at this point and she said she was pregnant again you know hey you know how i go and we were walking or something like that. And she was with me, with our family. And she sees Elder Malcolm. She said El the Elder Malcolm was with us. And she said he had two swords on his back. And me and him were going back and forth. And she said the Elder Malcolm was telling me that we had to go. My family couldn't come with. He said they had to stay behind, but me and him had to go. He said we had work to do. And I was betwixt. I was hesitant. I didn't want to leave my family. Just as any, you know, loving father, man wouldn't want to do. You know, of course, you know, we don't, we don't want to. We take care of our families here in Great Millstone. All right. Regardless of whatever slander somebody has told you about the men of great millstone we take care of our responsibilities we take care of our wives and children and so you know me and him were having a basically a back and forth and i was just like well, you know damn you know my, my wife is pregnant like i can't just leave her you know i can't just leave my family and he was like no nah, brother the spirit spirit already revealed that they were going to be okay don't worry about them they're going to be fine you need to come with me because we have work to do. And I was still, you know, betwixt. And then she said the Elder Malcolm had, <clears throat> the Elder Malcolm got mad. You know, he got vexed with me. And she said as he got vexed, he began to glow real bright. Um, and as he began to yell at me like, no, we have to go. You know, basically, come on. All right. Quit this bullshitting. They're going to be okay. You need to come with me. We have work to do. And, you know, he just started glowing real bright, you know, like like Dragon Ball Z, like how Super Saiyan glows. He just had a real bright glow about him. And she said, when this happened, I put my head down and I looked at her and I said, babe, I'll be right back. <laughs> and she woke up. You know, so hey, it was crazy, man. But hey, it's it's a beautiful thing, man. And um, that's basically the breakdown on how the men of the Lord have to be. We have to be sure, and we have to be faithful in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai that He will deliver our families. He will take care of us as long as we do what we're supposed to do, as long as we execute. Okay, we we're gonna have work to do. All right. As this society continues its downward spiral in decay and civil unrest and famine, plagues, all of the above, the men of the Lord are going to have work to do and we're going to be more and more important. All right. The scriptures say that in Isaiah, I believe it's Isaiah 13, a man shall be as fine gold in that day. 
All right. We're going to be a very valuable resource in that day. OK, we are going to be a beacon of light, beacons of hope. All right. We're going to be coverts. We're going to be a, a safe, a safe havens. OK, for, for other men, women and children. OK, we're going to be leading people to salvation. And in the midst of it, there are a hey, certain of us are going to be endowed with those spiritual powers to to protect, to heal. Just like in uh, the book of Acts, you know, the New Testament. OK, the men of the Lord were healing people. All right. And they were doing many miracles. These things are coming back. All right. Only this time. As is written in the book of Daniel, the saints of the most high are going to take the kingdom. So amidst in the midst of all the healing and of all the, the, the great wonders, the men of the Lord are going to be endowed with power to take down this kingdom. All right. Upon the return of our Lord. OK, the men of the Lord are going to be able to get out of certain jams and it's going to be uh, what's the word I'm looking for by divine intervention. Whether it be an angel appear or whether the Lord strengthen us and, and, and amen, teach our hands to war. These things are coming. But we as men of the Lord cannot hesitate to follow order and trust in the spirit. All right. Let me get the scripture. This is the book of Second Timothy, chapter two, verse three. It says, thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And so we are told hey, we get called to be soldiers. OK, when duty calls, it's all hands on deck. We can't be. Um, we can't be too worried about the well-being and safeties of our family. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai got our kids. How about Shem Yahweh Shai got our wives, you know, or the ones that make it. <laughs> hey, a lot of you women that are wives to men of the Lord right now, a lot of y'all ain't going to make it. That's just the truth. But that's not the point. All right. The point is, hey, when duty calls, hey, we must answer. We can't hesitate. All right. We have to answer the call of duty. All right. No matter what it is or what it may be, because though it may conflict with what you might got going on, OK, the work of the Lord takes precedence over everything. All right. So, hey, you drop everything, all hands on deck. All right. Your how about Shem Yahweh Shai is not treacherous. He's not going to call you to do the work and then forsake your family, man. You have to believe that you and your household are going to make it out of here. All right. And there's plenty of examples of men of the Lord that by faith left everything. All right. Whether it be a uh, uh, kindred, all right, families, all right, the men of the Lord, hey, they, 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 they suffered losses, okay, but what? They answered the call of duty. And I won't even call it losses, all right? These are really just lessons. The things written aforetime are written for our learning. Let's go. This is Genesis chapter 12. I'll start at 1. Now, Yahweh had said to Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee and I will make thee a great. I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curseth thee and in thee shall all families of the earth be called. So Abram departed as Yahweh had spoken to him and Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran. See, so hey, Abraham got called because he was chilling. He was in his father's house. Hey, Abraham, and they weren't poor. All right. They had that bag. They were all right. But what the Lord called them up out of there to go what? Go to the land of Canaan. All right. Which is really a uh, which really is the land of Israel. OK, because that's where we were going to be. That's where Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai promised the chosen seed from Abraham to Isaac and the lot rested on Jacob. Okay. But what Abraham, a, hey, he didn't stick around and bullshit. He went along right with it. Hey, I got to go. I got to go, you know, but let's get a more extreme case of a uh, sacrifice. Okay. 
Because, hey, some of the men of the Lord, hey, hey if it's your lot to, to, to maybe lose a family member or a loved one, then that's just what it is. We have to have the mindset and the faith that they're going to be all right. First of all, with all hell breaking loose, you know, to lose a family member or a, or a loved one. All right. This may seem a bit harsh, but it's just a reality to lose one of them in that day. You know, let it be a, a quick death. That's really mercy. A lot of people are getting ready to starve to death due to a famine that's coming to America. It's going to be a lot of civil unrest. All right. A lot of cannibalism. OK. A lot of murder. A lot of just unspeakable acts of violence are getting ready to happen and kick off here in America. So for them to be with the Lord, it's a hell of a blessing and you will receive them back just like Job did. Job lost his whole family. All right. His wife even turned on him. His friends didn't really comfort him much. But what? At the end, when he endured through his chastisement, he received that back times seven. All right. His children were where hey, he had uh, more children. He had more wealth. All right. So, hey, Job was straight, but what? He had to go through, you had to go through that trial, man. Okay? And guess what? Yahweh Shemiah Shai is about to try his men. Okay? So we have to maintain our integrity and our faith that he is and he will deliver. But let's, let's see what happened with Ezekiel, one of the mighty prophets of the Lord. This is Ezekiel chapter 24, verse 15. Also, the word of Yahweh came to me, saying, Son of man, behold, I take away from thee the desire of thine eyes with a stroke. Yet neither shall you mourn nor weep, neither shall thy tears run down. Forbear to cry, make no mourning for the dead. Bind the tire upon thine head upon thee. Salakia, bind the tire of thine head upon thee and put on thy shoes upon thy feet and cover not thy lips and eat not the bread of men. So I spake unto the people in the morning and at even my wife died. That's who the desire of Ezekiel's eyes was. The Lord said he was going to take her away and she died. And I did in the morning as I was commanded. Woo. Now that's fortitude. See. All right. That's not an easy thing for your wife to die. But to, hey, to still do as you were commanded to not even cry. Let's keep going. It says. And the people said unto me, will you not tell us what these things are to us that you do? Then I answered them. The word of Yahweh came to me, saying, speak unto the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord God, behold, I will profane my sanctuary, the excellency of your strength, the desire of your eyes and that which your soul pitieth and your sons and your daughters whom ye have left shall fall by the sword and ye shall do as I have done. You shall not cover your lips, nor eat the bread of men and your tires, meaning your metries, shall be upon your heads and your shoes upon thy feet. You shall not mourn nor weep, but you shall pine away for your iniquities and mourn one toward another. Thus, Ezekiel is unto you a sign. According to all that he hath done, shall ye do when this cometh. You shall know that I am Yahweh. So, amen. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Amen. He had a stern task. For Ezekiel, man, it's no easy thing to suffer the loss of a loved one, let alone, you know, the wife of your bosom, you know, a woman you wake up to every day, a woman you deal with every day, a woman you're intimate with, you know, that you express and vent to speak your mind to. Well, that's a good woman. I know a lot of brothers, <laughs> they got women they can't do that. way, <laughs> But you know what I mean? OK, so, hey, that was a rough task. But, hey, he did as the Lord commanded him. You see, and that's all by faith. He was made a sign. So not saying necessarily this is going to happen to the men of the Lord, but hey, it happened to Ezekiel. All right. Keep in mind, it can happen to you, but you have to push forward. You have to uh, uh, hey, maintain your course, man. <laughs> hey, easier said than done. But somebody got to do it. All right. Let's get Hebrews chapter 11. I believe it's Hebrews chapter 11. Let's get into Moses. Uh, 
black, I believe it was. Uh huh. There it is. This is Hebrews chapter 11. Yeah, I get it. No, not that much. Let's see. Okay, yeah, I'll start at 24 to 27. This is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24. It says, By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of the Most High than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Yahawashai Hamashiach greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. And that hey, that's just what it, that's what this walk is all about, man. Enduring as a good soldier, man, by faith. Knowing that Yahweh Bashimi Al Shai sees your works. All right. And when he calls you to duty, you make that answer. You answer that call, all hands on deck, no hesitance. Be assured that everything will be okay. Okay? And I'm going to end it off with that. All right? You may have to leave your family for a sec. You'll receive them back. You're going to have to be uncomfortable. That's okay. How about Shimei Awashai got us, man? All right? Because, hey, in this times, he's going to show great mercy. You see? Scriptures say, I believe that's in Second Ezra, you know, behold the great grace of them to come, whom having not seen yet believed. Okay. So, hey, man, even though we haven't physically seen Yahweh Bashim Shai, we know that he is. We know he watches. We know he, hey, he recompenses reward to the righteous and he rewards evildoers. Okay. So when you're called, answer that call, man. It's all good. This is. Romans chapter 8, verse 28, it says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Ooh, so everything is going to work out, man. It's going to be all good because we love Yahweh Bashim Shai. He first loved us. So he got us, man. Don't hesitate. Okay? Don't, don't. Don't uh, second guess Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Go all in, man. Balls to the wall. Just know it's going to be all good, man. All right? And you're going to be tested. You're going to go through that test of, of, of leaving loved ones, okay, to answer that call of duty. You're going to go through that test of hell, even being uncomfortable with them, being in rough situations, all right, being feeling like you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Just have patience and endure that trial, man. Endure that. All right. You're going to emerge as gold. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for he shall receive a crown from the heavenly father, as is written in James. So I hope this was edifying. That's about it, man. All right. All praises to Yahweh. Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. Ba'ashim Rechah Kodash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of the great millstone. Salutations to the hopeful elect. Shalom and a Baba Ball.